What's up, my fine crew? Welcome back to Fine Beauty Bible. Every single time I post my hair, whether it be a photo or video, I get so many questions about how I keep my hair long, healthy, avoid breakage, what is my wash day routine, and I'm here to give you all of the details today. But first, let's start out with what my hair looks like. So this is what my hair looks like in a braid out. This is what my hair looks like just blow dried, but not straightened. This is what my hair looks like blow dried, but hit with a little bit of humidity. This is what my hair looks like when it is blow dried and flat ironed, AKA silk pressed. Now, usually I like to get my hair done at a salon, to be honest, but I am gonna walk you through today what I do at home whenever I do do wash day by myself. So let's get into this routine, shall we? Answer a quick little Q&A about my hair. I don't have a relaxer. I've never had a relaxer before in life. I've never gotten keratin treatment or any sort of um, curl loosener. I've never even put so much as a hair rinse in my hair. It has been like this since I've been born and the most I've ever done to it was get a haircut. <laughs> That's all. I've never done anything to my hair before, so my routine has always been very simple. Pretty much just wash, condition, blow dry. That's it. If I have gotten silk presses done before, but I've never gotten any treatments, you know, to make it longer, looser, whatever you want to call it. So, now let's get into the routine. If hair breakage is a concern of yours, you would definitely benefit from a protein treatment every now and then. Protein helps to make your hair stronger and less prone to breakage. Most people prefer Olaplex number three for this type of treatment, but I love this Bond Curl Rehab Salve from Curlsmith because it has more nourishing ingredients. Now, that doesn't make it a replacement for your actual conditioner, but it does make it much easier to avoid that crunchy protein overload feeling that you can sometimes get from treatments like this. One of my favorite shampoos is this one by First Aid Beauty and it's called their anti-dandruff shampoo. If you didn't know, you probably couldn't tell just from videos, but I have an extremely dry scalp. I'm talking, it will start to flake two days after I get my hair freshly washed. So this is like my go-to ride or die. And what I love about it is that rather than using salicylic acid, which is an exfoliant that's usually used in a lot of dandruff shampoos, it actually uses a more gentle ingredient to keep your hair from flaking. So it is safe for daily use if you wash your hair every day, but I don't. Of course, for my tools, I have to have a fine tooth comb, not because I'm using a fine tooth comb to detangle, but because of this little rat tail that's on the end of it. This metal tail on the comb really helps me to part my hair into separate sections so that I can wash it more efficiently without having to worry about my entire head at once. A wide tooth comb, which I do use for detangling. This doesn't matter the brand, you can find one anywhere. Now this is my favorite detangling brush. It might sound strange to detangle your hair with a brush, but the bristles on this one are actually made out of plastic. They are perfectly spaced out, so it's not like trying to detangle with a fine tooth comb. And it glides through your hair surprisingly easy for a brush. It makes blow drying, which is the next step, 20 times easier. My absolute favorite blow dryer. I have done an entire video on this blow dryer before. It is amazing, so fast, blow dries my entire head in 10 minutes. If you wanna see a full review of it, I will leave the link to that demonstration in the description box because it's not gonna be in this video. And like I said, an extremely dry scalp. In between washes, I love this Natural Moisturizing Factors Scalp Serum by The Ordinary because it is amazing for the price and it really keeps my hair from feeling overly dry, uncomfortable, or just irritated in between washes. And I can use it when my hair has a silk press as well. It's the Ordinary Natural Moisturizing Factors plus Hyaluronic Acid for the scalp. And it actually comes in this nice milky texture that I have really been enjoying because when I tell you guys I have the driest scalp, and I like this serum because it sort of teaches people the correct way to take care of your scalp. 
Some people think that when your scalp is dry or if your scalp is itchy that that's the time to put a hair oil in and that just makes no sense for so many reasons but to put it simply when your hair is dry the only thing that can reverse dryness is water. When your hair is itchy and dirty the only thing that can reverse that is cleaning it. Putting oil on top of your, a dirty scalp or putting oil on a completely dry scalp, just the same way putting oil on top of a dry body, it doesn't work. You need something to hydrate underneath that layer of moisture. Otherwise, what are you putting oil on? You're not sealing in any moisture because there's no hydration under there to begin with. Does that make sense? So when my scalp is dry, I never put oils in my scalp. I literally just will hop back in the shower, wash my hair, basically start the process all over again if my scalp starts to feel dry and itchy. Now this you can use in between washes to hydrate your scalp so that you are actually targeting the problem. You're adding hydration to your scalp so that it's not as dry, so that it's not as itchy. And this is a lot better than trying to put oil on your scalp to hydrate it, which makes no sense because as you guys know from watching Fine Beauty Bible, oils do not hydrate. So yeah, similar to the hyaluronic acid that you would put on your face as a hydration step in your routine, this is hydration and moisture for the scalp. And I have been loving it because I have a detrimentally dry scalp. And I don't always have a hairstyle where I can just wash my hair every single day when it starts to feel dry or uncomfortable. It's super lightweight. I have a silk press right now and it doesn't make my hair curl up at the root, so it's perfect. I put it on at night, I tie my hair down, and the next morning my scalp is not so inflamed and dry and flaky. And that is the ordinary hair care. So the first step of the routine is actually the protein treatment. A lot of people think you would shampoo and then condition and then do any special treatments, but this has to go first. And the way you use it is not as a replacement for your conditioner. For the protein treatment, you really have to make sure that your hair is completely wet before you apply it. So I really stand directly under the water and soak my hair from root to tip. I will go over it, make sure it is ready for that treatment. When I'm applying the treatment, I apply it in sections. So I'll do the front part first, swing that to the back, do the back, really make sure I get it all throughout my hair. After that, I will put my hair in a shower cap and set a timer for 20 minutes. And after that 20 minutes is up, I actually take the shower cap off and of course rinse very thoroughly. You want to make sure you get all that extra protein treatment out of your hair so that there's nothing left over. Next up is of course the shampoo. I apply a very generous amount and I really like to focus on my roots when I'm shampooing because that's what's most important. Of course you want to make sure all of your hair is clean but where most of your buildup is is going to be on your roots so I really focus there. I get out all of the gel, the edge control, anything I might have applied to my hair this week completely out. You can also do this in sections if it makes it easier to be more thorough. Now, what I love about the shampoo is that rather than using salicylic acid, like I mentioned before, it actually uses a different ingredient called, let me double check how you say it, pyrithione zinc. And that is a formulation of zinc that is very antibacterial, very antimicrobial, and antifungal. So no matter what is causing the dryness and irritation on your scalp, this ingredient is known to help get it under control. Um, so people use this to treat acne, psoriasis on the scalp, and also dandruff. Which is great because something like psoriasis on the scalp, you cannot use salicylic acid to treat without further irritating it. So this is why I love this one so much, is because you can use it no matter what type of scalp irritation or over dryness you have. For conditioner, I actually don't have a favorite, but I do have two that I like to sort of switch back and forth between. 
One of them is the Miel Babasu Mint. This is labeled as a deep conditioner, but to be honest, I don't really believe in the idea of a deep conditioner because there's no conditioner that's going to repair your hair all in one shot. There's no conditioner that's going to make up for the fact that maybe you haven't washed your hair in three weeks. There's no conditioner that's going to make up for the fact that your hair is overly dry and not being targeted except for when you wash your hair one time a week. So I don't believe in the idea of deep conditioning, but I do like that the ingredients in this do make my hair feel very soft. They give it the slip that it needs for me to detangle. It has that babasu mint in it so it does feel very nice on my scalp. So I just love the way this feels in my hair. I just don't call anything a deep conditioner because I believe that conditioner is conditioner and no conditioner is going to make up for if you aren't treating your hair properly any other time besides when you wash your hair. I also really love this Make It Rain Hydration Rich Conditioner by Taraji P. Henson's line. This, I like it because the ingredients in it are very simple. It has a little bit of avocado oil. It has a little bit of argan oil. It's just a very hydrating conditioner. So I like the way it feels on my hair. As far as steps go, I don't really overthink it. I just pick one of those every time I wash my hair. I lather my hair in it. I really, really focus on the ends when it comes to conditioner. And when it comes to shampoo, I keep it on the roots um, and wash very thoroughly after that. And then while that conditioner is in, I detangle. Something that's important to note about the way I detangle is that I hold that comb very loosely. As you can see, I basically am just dropping the comb at my tips until it gets through the hair and slowly making my way to the root. I'm not pulling, yanking, tugging, forcing anything to untangle, nothing. I am just dropping that comb through there gently until it gets through all the knots. Then I'm using the brush to detangle a little bit more. I really don't do too much with the brush. Then I'm parting my hair with the fine tooth comb into several different sections so that when it's time to blow dry, I actually have different little sections to work with. I finish off with my scalp serum that I told you guys about before, and that is it. After I have completely washed my hair, conditioned, did my little protein treatment, put in a little bit of scalp serum, the last step is just to blow dry my hair. And after I blow dry my hair, I will usually either put it into a slick bun like how I have right now, or I will go and get it silk pressed, it depends. But the main wash day is these steps here that we talked about. Everything else that's after, I would consider that to be more hair styling and not really hair care. And that is my hair routine. Let me know if any of these tips help you out, if you learned something new, if any of these products sound interesting to you. I have everything listed in the description box below, including my review of my favorite blow dryer, products that I use, everything. Everything, everything, everything is below. Don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you scroll through Find Beauty Bible, binge watch a few more videos. Um, meet me in the comments if you have any questions, and I will catch you in the next one. Enjoy the rest of Find Beauty Bible Season 6.